I do wonder when you look at some people and it's yeah it's, it's usually men I don't think it's women they seem to have very large ears or they seem to stick out quite a bit I wonder if they really do have large ears or is it because they've got short hair I wonder why um, they've somehow evolved genetically and have their ears uh, predisposed to um, to stick out um, I don't know if it can be a bad thing because um, obviously they're like a, a funnel of sound and uh, obviously having two ears gives you this 3D um, sound effect so you can your brain can calculate where the uh, the sound is coming from and I can see there's a lot of benefits with having uh, quite large ears I suppose some may say a downside to that is they're not very aesthetically pleasing they might not be that easy on the eye but I always think the beauty um, is in the eye of the beholder I think in general I don't consider myself to be any way uh, um, handsome or attractive um, and I, I, you know, I do, um, I do find interest in the whole um, thing around uh, beauty and, and, and being handsome. And uh, my understanding is that um, to appeal to most people, it's really to do with normality and symmetry is the key elements. Um, a symmetrical face, um, eyes level, generally pointing in the right direction, ears not too sticky outy, and uh, yeah. Maybe a nice smile as well. I think everybody has a, you know, everybody likes a nice smile. I don't think anybody ever said, oh, I like a nice frown. And the effort involved in frowning it makes you really wonder if it's worth it. And then you get people with like the um, interesting resting faces. So this is a, I, I do feel sorry for some people, I think, because the resting face, the face when they're not smiling, they're not frowning, they're just there, the face. It might, might not be looking a great look. Um, not necessarily frowning. Maybe a bit of a scowl or maybe a grin. You know, maybe the, some people, you know, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that um, there could be an emotion presented by the resting face that wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be what they're trying to convey anyway. And I can see there have been a lot of problems around that. Um, I seem to remember as a, as a child in school, and I'd be very young... I was probably eight or nine, and uh, queuing to see the teacher, I think to get a, a book marked or something by the teacher. And I remember the, the teacher quite well. And uh, I suppose I was quite, uh, there, was time, there was moments, I was a happy child. And uh, I was scolded, I was told off for, uh, for smirking. I actually didn't really know what, um, <laughs> what a smirk was, um, but I, I was, maybe smiling when I shouldn't have been. I wasn't getting told off, but um, yeah, it was an odd experience to be told off for something I didn't really know what it was. Smirking, yeah. I sort of laugh, ha ha ha, I'm laughing at it now, because it's a lot of bollocks. Uh, it's a lot of shit. But um, yeah, smirking. So I was obviously, maybe someone in front of me was getting told off. The teacher was having a moment, and all my teachers had lots of moments. Um, maybe been very serious and stern with someone. Certainly wasn't me, as far as I can remember. And saw me in the queue, miles away, smirking. <laughs> I don't even think I can do a smirk now. Um, is that some sort of snide smile, is it? Um, you could Google it. Uh, I'm not going to. I don't do that if I can help it. Um, but yeah, so it was, it's interesting that here I am, <laughs> 40 years later, and I can remember that moment um, because I was a very good and studious child and never got into trouble. Um, I was a good kid um, and on a couple of occasions um, teachers uh, told me off for absolutely no good reason. And I, yeah, uh, I mean, you could argue that's, you know, humans, well, teachers are, you know, teachers are human. Um, yeah, you know, they can make mistakes, they can get emotional when they shouldn't. Um, yeah. I had a, another one of my, um, the problem, one of the problems I had as a child was I had a, a morbid fear of swimming. A very intelligent child, um, and I could see danger where maybe <laughs> other children couldn't. And uh, one, one facet of the school system in England at the time, and I think probably to this day, 
in junior school and the first couple of years of secondary school. So from the age of about seven, eight until 12 or 13, you have to go swimming uh, once a week. And uh, yeah, I, I absolutely hated it. Um, it was horrible for me, it was uh, torture. And um, looking back at some of the things they did to try to get me to swim, I mean, obviously with my safety in mind, I suppose, because that was the point of learning to swim. So that if you if you ever was in water and you was in trouble, I don't know, you could swim and, and, and survive, I suppose. But in reality, I was subjected to what could only be described as torture uh, over a, a quite a prolonged period of time. Um, from having a rope wrapped around me and dragged along the deep end, uh, maybe with a float and a couple of armbands, or even four armbands. Um, a couple of times, um, obviously the head went under the water and I breathed in water and it was chlorine and it was horrible. And you think you're gonna die. Um, so I had some really uh, humiliating, bad experiences. And I remember a teacher once saying to me, and, uh, and without fear of contradiction, I know she's dead now, as is probably a good, uh, portion of the teachers uh, that I had at that era and uh, yeah she's definitely dead um, she said you know what Jason you'd be the you'd be the perfect student if you just sorted out the swimming 